What's up, y'all? Thanks for stopping by the Surge T channel. I am Surge T, and tonight I'll be doing my rundown and thoughts on uh, NXT UK for the 23rd of September 2021. And let's get into it. Uh, the final match in the semis for the Heritage Cup number one contenders tournament is on, and it's Wolfgang of Gallus versus the Family Man, Teal Man. Now the first round goes to Wolfgang with a twisting suplex and Wolfie is up one fall to nil. And for once, a fall is declared in the first round. Uh, he was really, really um, tenacious, was uh, Wolfgang. And Teal Man in the first round was no match for him as the first round goes to Wolfgang. Second round goes to neither man, but it looked like as Teal Man was close to winning the second round. A drop kick on the top turnbuckle and he gets a near fall. And Wolfgang tried for a pin himself, but no go. As the third round commences, Teal Man is working on the left arm of Wolfgang, wearing him down, but a stiff shot to the side of Wolfgang with a sliding forearm and lays him out and just enough to keep him down for the three count and both men are knotted up a fall apiece. Teal Man hitting that sliding elbow. Really impressive. Very stiff, and uh, Wolfgang got knocked out, well, temporarily, of course, enough for the three count. Now, the fourth round, uh, and Wolfgang's arm is in a very bad place, and uh, Teal Man has his eye, it was, a, it was just that, what is that, on it, and is throwing everything at it. Now, even tying it up in the ropes, and he looks at the Coffee Brothers as at ringside as he does so, but Wolfgang delivers a clubbing blow, a clothesline, and a high angle, Splash in the corner, and Wolfgang, off the top turnbuckle, hits a double axe handle and floors Teal Man. Now Horohan Raja tries to interfere, but Mark Coffey takes him out, and this leaves Wolfgang to hit that devastating spear and get the second and deciding fall. And Wolfgang moves on to face Supernova himself, uh, Noam Dar, in the finals. Who do I got? Well, I've been picking... Uh, Wolfgang and uh, I guess you could say that maybe Wolfgang will uh, win but then again if they want a an athletic match in a sense of people whose styles are kind of similar you put Noam Dar and uh, Tyler Bate for the championship but let's see what uh, big strong boy uh, Tyler Bate can do against someone else who can match his power as well and that is Wolfgang so it's kind of up in the air. Maybe next week I'll, I'll, I'll let on to see say who it is. But maybe I'll just write it out and uh, see who wins the, uh, you know, the finals. Now, Blair Davenport says, hello, Sid. It says that I'm Blair Davenport. You know, the one you suspended. And you can punish me all you like, but bad things will continue to happen. So you better think smart. Reinstate me. Well, Blair, you kind of did what you did. Uh, kind of made your bed. Now you got to line it. Uh, you know, sort of thing. But uh, what she's doing is maybe smart on her part because she's kind of getting into the head of Siskala. Siskala doesn't want any of his uh, people, any of his talent to get hurt. And she's going to continue to do it. She didn't do anything this week, but who knows what she's going to do next week. Now, subculture. I like them. You know, Daniel Luna and, uh, you know, uh, Mark Andrews and um, Flash Morgan Webster. And uh, their subculture, you know, their, their sign, their mural, is defaced by Sam Gradwell with the Y-O-G on it. Don't know what Y-O-G means. He said it before, you know. Uh, and he laughed, you know, prior to subculture finding out. He says, good morning, subculture. And they find out, and, uh, and they kind of shrugged it off when they see it. And they say, yeah, we can fix it. I'm thinking nice, you know, uh, kind of seeing lemons and making uh, lemonade, if you will. So uh, they're kind of easy go, easy go, easy. You know, they're easy, like you know, they're like they're just like really, really just, you know, they're what do you call that word? But they're like easy going, and they're like they don't let anything get to them, kind of thing. They're just like okay, but then maybe they're gonna take care of him next week. Maybe they'll do something to him. Who knows? Back and forth kind of thing. But uh, let's move on, and we see a knock on the dressing room of the Irish Ace. But it's Gallus who are seen celebrating inside, and what would Devlin think? They have had their issues with uh, Jordan Devlin before. 
He shows up, speaking of Jordan Devlin, and Joe compliments Devlin's choice in coffee, a lovely Colombian roast. And uh, Devlin says, it's, it's not your coffee, it's my coffee. And Mark, you know, Andrew, I mean, Mark uh, Coffee says something about Gallus, you know, say, hey, we're, we're coffees, or something like that. But then Joe Coffee goes, I'm Joe Coffee. You know, like it was just so, so tongue in cheek, but hilarious how he said it. And, you know, that's the Iron King. I mean, before he used to be so serious. Now he's just laughing and joking and making a, a light of people and really getting under skin. I like that. You know, these guys are pretty funny. They can be, you know, but they're very serious. Of course, we've seen them in the ring, especially, uh, you know, uh, what Wolfgang did in the ring. And, uh, you know, but uh, the Iron King himself, he uh, unceremoniously throws Devlin out of his own dressing room. Kind of pushes him out and then he rolls backwards and it's like how embarrassing you know they even snagged his glasses and they left them out in the cold so to speak he even says my bags in there hey but my but my glasses and then he says insists on he's going to tell uh johnny saint so uh you know let's see what happens next week you know it's probably gonna be a match set up uh they're gonna probably be called into the principal's office if you will <laughs> so we'll see now, uh, Isla, Dawn, Isla Dawn is in action, and, well, is she going to win this match or continue to be a klepto, as Andy puts it? And she has been appropriating trophies from various peers and contemporaries, as Nigel put it, a watch, a lock of hair, as part of her recent witchcraft. But her opponent going through her locker, going through her locker to, you know, she was offended and, uh, you know, looks to make uh, the White Witch of NXT UK pay. And uh, that is, of course, uh, Ginny. And uh, in this match, you know, we see a double knee by Dawn. Uh, gets a near fall. She even had Connors, by, you know, by the hands. And <clears throat> and what was that, you know? But uh, in the end, uh, you know, Ginny hits the makeover. Finisher by, you know, and then she curses the victory. And uh, Don, you know, like she was on afterwards, you know, Don was in the, uh, was on the turnbuckle and flirting with Connor. So this is how it ended, how she was pinned. And then Jeannie took advantage and hit that devastating brain buster like maneuver. Kind of reminds me of X Pox, uh, the X Factor, where he just does a split leg. He fucking just slams somebody's, you know, head into the mat, right? Have you seen other, even, even, even you've seen female wrestlers use that move as well. But the way she did it was, it was she spiked her hair, you know, she spiked Isla Dawn's head into the, uh, the mat. And it looked devastating, and Isla Dawn's in the corner, and she's smiling. And I guess she's okay with losing matches as long as she gets her trophies from her opponents. Who, what is she going to get from Ginny, or was that mirror? Did she, did she because she just put a, a hex on it, and that's enough for her? I don't know. Next week we might see her in the, uh, wherever that is in the woods, and she's going to be, you know, probably... You're gonna show like a little little thing, a little footage of, of her snagging something from Ginny, maybe a, a thread on her dress or I mean on her ring gear or maybe she got some hair. I don't know, you know, that's weird. But it's different, you know, because I think she got who was that one hair that she got from? I think it was Island it was uh Danny Luna. And you know, she got her hair. Speaking of Danny Luna, uh she's showing uh uh her power by doing squats with the bar over her head. Um they're saying that she's the strongest uh, female, maybe even the strongest in uh, uh, all of NXT UK. But Zaya Brookside, uh, she wants to face off with Luna, whom she never faced before. And Danny, you know, she's down with Zia, you know, with Zaya, with Zaya, uh, Bro Zaya Brookside. And Zaya Brookside is sure, but does Luna have the speed, says uh, second generation superstar. Uh, this is Zaya Brookside. And, um,. We move on to uh, a vignette, and I'm going to show you something you've never seen before, says uh, Charlie Dempsey, someone who is all about old school. But he is someone who likes to inflict pain, and I am not surprised because his father is William Regal. He showed him a little bit last week in the same kind of a segment, and uh, you know, a little vignette. Here he is again, and actually he's going to be making his debut next week. And um, I'm very, very intrigued because of the history and because of the reputation of William Regal. We all know what kind of a tough, uh, you know, what his mother effort he is and what he's done in his career. So let's see how Charlie Dempsey does um, in his uh, 
debut on uh, UK uh, next week. Now, Trent Seven is talking best wrestling moves with Ashton Smith and Oliver Carter. The bookend is inferior to the rock bottom, he says, and Trent makes the comparison between comparing Smith and Carter to Mustache Mountain. It's like, you know, comparing the, you know, bookend to the rock bottom is like uh, comparing Smith and Carter to Mustache Mountain, and they have problems with that, but Trent says, how about a first-time match between us? You know, they're like, well, what about Trent, uh, you know, about, uh, what's his name? About uh, you know, Tyler Bate. And you say, oh, Tyler Bates uh, busy doing things, but uh, he's he's down. He's 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 okay with it. He's, he was like that. Pretty much talking for Tyler Bates. I don't know. I've been always thinking about there's going to be a, a dust up between them, a blow up, and they're going to end up uh, at each other and probably having a uh, feud. But maybe that's on uh, sometime down the road. But uh, you know, we'll see. Now, uh, the Irish uh, Ace Jordan Devlin versus the Iron King Joe Coffey next week. So there is a match that came out from that, and while. On the heels of that, Zaya Brookside versus Daniel Luna next week. Then Mustache Mountain uh, versus uh, Smith and Carter next week as well. And then, uh, like I say, uh, the NFC uh, UK next week is looking to be a good one. Now up next is the main event where the number one contender for the NFC UK Championship will be determined. Rampage Brown versus Nathan Frazier versus A-Kid. And both of the lighter men look to double team the bigger Rampage Brown. But as the, they dispatch him of him momentarily, they go at it one-on-one. -on -one. But Brown returns and imposes his power and shows it by giving Fraser a high cross body, sending Fraser almost through the ceiling. And once again, Fraser and A Kid double up on Brown, who never who overpowers and knocks knocks them all over the ring. He's knocking them about and pretty much uh, like just like swatting flies out of the air. And they're Really, really looking to try and contend with his size and his power. Now, my pick is all over the two men. You know, tossing the A kid over the top rope and goes to work on Fraser and lights him up on a top turnbuckle with a chop. A kid puts the stop on Brown and attempts a submission, but Brown again picks up A kid and slams him on a prone Fraser. These two have to take out Brown or else, uh, you know, they have no shot at either of them winning. But Fraser looks, uh, but Fraser like almost listening to me, you know. Uh, he hits a reverse DDT on Akid and uh, a DDT on Brown. After flipping off uh, the second rope, no, he didn't flip off the second rope. Uh, <laughs> he did a, he did a moonsault springboard, but only gets a near fall on Akid. Now leave it all in the ring, says Fraser's mentor Seth Rollins. That was brought up as uh, Seth Rollins, uh, who mentors Fraser, said that. And we know Rollins does that just that every match that he's in. But talk about a series of impressive moves. Um, Brown intercepts A Kid's uh, sidekick. He uses A Kid's uh, leg to kick Fraser, and then sets them up and delivers a belly to back suplex on both the men simultaneously, but gets a near fall on A Kid. A Kid does a leg scissors on Brown, while at the same time arm drags Fraser. And hits a sliding belly to back suplex on Fraser as Fraser is standing on the second rope and ends that sequence with a high cross body off the turnbuckle, off top turnbuckle on Fraser for a near fall. Man, I am spent. This match is insane, and just who would put it, who will pull it out and be crowned the next challenger for Ilya Dragunov's NXT UK Championship? Now, Brown saves the match after Fraser's. Hits a sick Samoan drop, like slam off the top turnbuckle. And man, Fraser came close after a series of offenses, offense moves. And as he dives off the top turnbuckle, Brown turns it into a power slam. Brown hits the Dr. Bomb, and A-Kid locks in a sleeper on Brown. But Brown powers up and deposits A-Kid to the outside apron. And A-Kid comes back in, slides back in, and super kicks Brown, sending him to the outside. Suplexes... Fraser and delivers a jumping kick to become a number one, the number one contender, and what a phenomenal match! All three men left it in the ring, and A Kid deserves this victory. He was impressive in that match with Jordan Devlin some time back. Uh, but Jordan Devlin was the one that put him out with an injury. We've seen him in some impressive stuff. He is, of course, the inaugural Heritage Cup champion, and they kind of, uh, you know, pushed him past that now, and now he's. Uh, on the road now to his first uh, challenge for
for for the uh, NXT UK Championship. Uh, do I, uh, you know, pick him for that? Do I see him? No, I don't see Elia Dragunov uh, way, uh, losing the title anytime soon. But uh, he could definitely establish himself as one of the top contenders, as one of the top uh, echelon in um, NXT UK. Uh, this is a guy that people will look at at first and not think anything about them just because they're, you know, he's, 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 he's smaller. He's not one of those super heavyweights. He's not one of those guys like Rampage Brown or, or Walter. But the guy is very deceptive when it comes to what people expect. They go, oh, you know, what can he do? And look what he did in this match. And I've always had my eye on every one of his matches because it's just like the way he attacks, um, you know, the match, the way he uh, goes... I guess an opponent, the what he does, what he brings to the, you know, to the, um, you know, to the um, ring, um, you know, he's, he's uh, very um, athletic. He's got a lot of good uh, submission holds, and you see what he do with his uh, hands and feet, especially with his kicks. Um, a jumping kick is what um, took out Fraser and became the number one contender. Uh, so uh, I really enjoyed um, Rampage. Well, of course, I, I, I enjoyed Rampage Brown, A-Kid, and Fraser, Nathan Fraser in this match. But I enjoyed um, NXT UK. I always do. Uh, there was one a few um, you know, a few weeks back that I was like, you know, it could have been better, but it wasn't bad, you know, kind of thing. But usually, I'm always praising NXT UK. It's on par with uh, just the best wrestling that you can see. It's British style, you know. You know we don't see... Um, you know, be done there. We don't see Rich Holland. We don't see, um, you know, Daddy Birch and some of these guys who are hard hitting. That style prefers their type of uh, wrestling, you know. But, uh, you know, without them there, uh, it's okay because we got guys like this, like in the main event. And we got Ilya Dragunov. We still got Walter lurking around, don't know where he's at. Maybe pretty soon he's going to make his debut in NXT. Maybe go after the NXT uh, title. Who knows? A pretty tough challenge for Tommaso Ciampa. But remember, Tommaso Ciampa challenged him. Uh, I believe it was at a takeover for the NXT UK Championship. So uh, if Tommaso Ciampa is going to keep that title on for a little bit while, maybe Walter will be in his future. And I beg to, and I kind of shudder to think what would happen to uh, Tommaso Ciampa if uh, that does happen. Uh, he didn't survive the last match he had. So let's see what happens. If that ever happens, and that's kind of like a thing that I'm looking forward to if that ever happens. But uh, anyway, that's my video for my rundown of thoughts on NXE UK again for September 23, 2021. So for those of you who stopped by and checked out my video, appreciate it. Thank you very much. And in closing, as always, take care.